Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Well, unfortunately, yes, it does end, but we're glad to have it twice a week, the Lawrence County Sportsnet podcast series here at lcsportsnet.com. Our weekly get-togethers, as always, delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. For, give them a call for delivery of your bottled water delivery service. We're going to get down to the nitty-gritty, lots of games. All the county teams are playing against non-county foes, so eight games to preview. So a nice long podcast, we're going to make it even longer, because before we get into the previews this week, it is time to announce our awards for the month of September. First, a big thank to everybody uh, to sent in the uh, nominations. We went through each nomination that was sent for both the uh, LGKG Male and Female Athlete of the Month, as well as the LCAP Team of the Month. We then took a team of 10 members uh, from our Sportsnet crew and uh, from others in the area, uh, other experts in the area, to come up with our first victors. This is what we're going to do throughout the course of the year for each and every month. So let's get right into it without any further ado. First, our LGKG Female Athlete of the Month is Sophia Cavelli of Nishanik. The senior golfer helped the Nishanik uh, team to an undefeated section season and the Tri-County Championship. She also qualified for uh, the individual girls golf championships and uh, after the first round in second place by just two strokes, hoping to take home WPILO gold. Hopefully that'll be the bigger crown, but for now, the first ever Female Athlete of the Month. Congratulations to Nishanik Sophia Cavelli, your LGKG Female Athlete of the Month for September. Our LGKG Male Athlete of the Month, who else but Jay Rona, the Mohawk senior quarterback who has set the single season touchdown record uh, for Mohawk uh, in the months of August and September alone. He currently leads the WPIL with 24 passing touchdowns on the season. He's also set single game records in both passing yards and touchdowns in a game this year. Oh, by the way, he also qualified for the golf championships as well. Congratulations, Mohawks Jay Rona, our September LGKG Male Athlete of the Month. And finally, our final award, the September LCAP Team of the Month, your first ever LCAP Team of the Month, the Elwood City Boys Cross Country Team. The Elwood City Wolverines Cross Country Team currently ranked in the state from the class of 1A, currently ranked in the top 10. They're undefeated 8-0 on the regular season, and another big accomplishment, they were in the Red, White, and Blue Classic uh, up in West Middlesex, finishing third out of 29 schools in that Red, White, and Blue Classic. So congratulations, Elwood City. Yes, that's right, Elwood City and the Boys Cross Country Team for your first LCAP team of the month and congratulations to coach nathan brown and his squad for all that they have done uh, so far this year and looking for more and again hopefully uh, by the time this is announced sophia cavelli will be getting more medals uh for her accolades jay rona uh did did make it to the final round of the golf championships uh, he had a fantastic season on the golf course and his season still heating up already breaking records and still going on the football field and hopefully elwood city uh, cross country team can keep moving forward as well. There you have it. Your first awards. That's how we'll do it all throughout the course of this uh, sports season and all through the uh, winter and spring seasons as well. But for now, we're going to step aside. We'll be back in a moment to preview Week Five's football contests here in the Lawrence County Sports Net podcast series. It's delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. I think the key to any attorney-client relationship is trust. My father told me a long time ago, the definition of personal integrity is really simple. Do what you say you're going to do. At LGKG, we've been doing that for over 80 years. For more than 120 years, people have been relying upon Martindale Hubble's AV preeminent rating to select their attorneys. If you're involved in a workers' compensation situation, you should do the same. LGKG has been AV rated for over 40 years. I love what I do because coming in every day is different. How can you not enjoy these kids coming up and hugging you and giving you these great smiles all throughout the day? 
seeing the progress that our kids make every single day is one of the reasons I love coming to school. What should we do? We have fun. LCAP Early Learning Centers is hiring. Help empower young minds in Lawrence County and become a superhero today. Apply at LCAP.org. And again, thanks to our friends at Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George, as well as uh, the Lawrence County Community Action Partnership, our powering sponsors, as they are uh, dedicated to giving out these awards monthly here for the team and the male and female athlete of the month. We'll talk more later. Again, remember, you can nominate your favorite team or athlete throughout the course of the month as well. For now, let's talk about October. First games here in the month of October for the football season. And let's start with the big one. We just talked about Jay Rona. His Mohawk Warriors, 3-0. They're hosting Beaver Falls in Bessemer. 3-0 versus 2-1 in the MAC. And again, what more can you say about the Mohawk offense? We just talked about Jay Rona as the LGKG Male Athlete of the Month. He's fourth in the WPIL right now with 1,434 passing yards and that school record 24 passing touchdowns. 11 of them have gone to Bobby Fadden. Yes, that's also a single season school record with 11 receiving touchdowns. What I like most though about this Warrior offense is the diversity of it though. Elwood City basically took Fadden out of the equation for majority of last week's game and no problem. Lake Logan, he takes over 95 yards and a touchdown. He had eight catches all season coming into the game. He had eight catches last week alone. Point being, Jay Rona will find the open man, go through his progressions, and work the offense as it needs to. And also, I really liked his ability using his legs. We know he can, hasn't had to do it much, uh, but he made some big uh, runs with his legs this past week. He is a four-sport athlete and certainly showed it again on Friday night. But maybe even more spectacular, though, has been this Mohawk defense. Kind of under the radar, the way that the uh, offense has been playing. At times, it's a bend-don't-break defense, but even when Elwood had a long drive starting the game, the uh, the Warrior Chop able to get a crucial turnover, Justin Boston with the interception at the goal line last week that really uh, started all the uh, offense, really, at that point for Mohawk as well. Now, this defense will be tested again really like they haven't been uh, since the Week 0 game at Union, and I just call it da-da-da for uh, the Tigers. Deshaun Denari Detalian. Deshaun Anderson Five passing touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns leading the way. Denari Harris, he leads the team with catches, 360 yards and four touchdowns through the air. And then throwing the leading rusher, Detalian Buford. 700 total yards, 10 touchdowns for him. Those three uh, are just uh, a microcosm, really, of what the full Beaver Falls offense is. But those three in particular really running the show. And speaking of three, how about three different players? Beaver Falls has used pretty uh, consistently throughout the season at quarterback, though Anderson certainly has become the mainstay for the most part. He's not your standard quarterback either. He's listed at only 160, but he'll play every position, and he's not afraid to lower the shoulder and lower the boom on every one of his carries. Uh, injuries have been a concern for Beaver Falls. Uh, P.D. Pugh, he's one of those three quarterbacks. He did not play last week. He's also one of the top defensive backs for the Tigers. Uh, neither did their big two-way lineman in uh, Samari McCoy. So uh, how healthy are the Tigers? Was it just a uh, week off before this week? That is yet to be seen. And uh, again, I think the key to Beaver Falls' win is the defense. Again, overlooked with the way the offense can play, but the Tigers in their wins are allowing 11 points per game. In the losses, it's up at 29 points per game. If it's a game in the uh, the teams of the 20s, no, I think that's advantage Beaver Falls. But once you get up into the 20s and higher, that's when I think it becomes advantage Mohawk. Beaver Falls, they have the advantage all time. How about 18 and one all time against Mohawk? The 20th matchup coming here on Friday night. Mohawk's only win was back in 2000, 31 to 28. And uh, let's go back 18 years to 2005. Beaver Falls was the only regular season loss for Mohawk in that 2005 season, 48 to 47 in double overtime. Could we see an instant classic like that? Oh, and speaking of instant classic, it would be classic for Beaver Falls. They're going for win number 700 in program history. Mohawk looking to play the spoiler. Eric Thomas and myself on the call from Bessemer on Friday night. The other game we'll have on the network. Tim Continenza, Jay Moan on the call for Nishanik against Freedom. Nishanik, who has now won five straight games in route to their 5-1 and one overall record. Uh, the best part? was winning last week in a 35-7 Mercy Rule game. Yes, Mercy Rule 
this because it means less gray hair for Coach Mazzocco and the staff after their back-to-back 27-26 last second victories. The Lancer ground game, they've been stellar all season long, and not surprising considering the returning core they have on their offensive line. But look at last week's game just as a microcosm of the season. Anthony Aiken, 180 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Pat Argero, 90 yards, a couple of scores. Gina Mazzocco also with a touchdown from the quarterback position. But maybe the biggest surprise of the year, in my mind at least, top two receivers, Dom Cubelis, Anthony Bonner, they do not have an offensive touchdown on the season. How about that? Now, they've gotten it done, both of them, defensively. They each have a pick six on the year, as does Pat Gargero. Um, but it's that Nishanic defense really, again, maybe flying under the radar, just getting the job done and getting a couple of splash plays here and there while they're at it. Freedom, complete opposite on the other end because they're looking for a big rebound, a stunning loss, 48-0 to Western Beaver. Maybe the loss not necessarily stunning, uh, but being shut out by the Golden Beavers, uh, certainly a surprise. The Bulldogs out 1-2 and two in the MAC, 2-4, uh, and or two and four, excuse me, overall. Ty Schulfeis leading the way on offense. He's number 21 at the quarterback position. Kind of interesting because uh, you got 25 wearing quarterback for Beaver Fall, so some unique quarterback numbers out there. Uh, but Schulfeis leading the way. For the quarterback position for the Bulldogs, his main target, Cody Patterson, he's got 30 of the team's 43 catches on the year, also six of the team's nine total touchdowns. Dakota Roberts, Cooper Young, they're the next biggest target for the Bulldogs, and I think that's what they need, a little more balance in those targets, open things more for Cody and for the running back, Tyler Welsh, in the backfield. Tyler Welsh is averaging five yards per carry, and he has a pair of touchdowns. I'd like to see him get moving early and often if you're a Bulldogs fan. Uh, especially because, yeah, you were shut out last week. Starting quickly will be key. And also because, well, the last four games in this series dominated by the Lancers with an average victory of 48-12. to 12. It's also homecoming at Bob Bledgy Stadium. Two down, six to go. Back in a moment with more previews, the Week 5 Preview Podcast here at LCSportsNet.com, delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water. Don't get left out to dry. Call the Penn, Ohio Bottled Water Company for the fastest and most efficient bottled water delivery service in the area. Penn, Ohio offers bottled water ranging from 16.9 ounce bottles to five gallon jugs, perfect for your next event or office water cooler system. Also, don't forget to ask about their custom labeling options. Visit PennOhioBottledWater.com for more information and to get a quote on their delivery services. Whether it's at home, in the office, or on the sidelines, Penn, Ohio has you covered. Let Penn Ohio Bottled Water do the heavy lifting for you and deliver fresh water, bottled water, coolers, either way, deliver it straight to your home or work. Let's keep it going. Elwood City against New Brighton. I have a feeling you're going to see a heavy dose of Elijah Palmer McCain. He was taken out of the game last week by the Mohawk defense. Elwood City uh, basically was forced to have somebody else beat him. And in the end, EPM taken out of that contest, 11 carries, 32 yards. He did have a touchdown and a pick uh, on defense. Uh, I think this week could just be a little more back to basics. Make sure you get the former WPL rushing leader the ball early and often. Chris Smiley, the quarterback, he's been impressive this year. Avoiding the turnover. He had a couple of picks last week against Mohawk. Um, Going to right the ship this week, I think, for Smiley and company. Looking to get it to Michael Walters and Daylon Curry as those main targets. New Brighton still looking for their first victory now in two seasons. Uh, quarterback Brian Taylor to wide receiver Michael Vion. That's been the main combo for the Lions this year. And uh, really, they've had a few splash plays here and there. Can they sustain those and get a couple or get some splash plays? Um, multiple in a single game, I guess the best way to put it. The 66th meeting, by the way, between the Wolverines and the Lions, dating all the way back to 1907. Yes, Elwood City's first year of football. New Brighton won that game back in 07, 13-5. Let's move down to Class 1A in the Big 7, and this is one of the big matchups of the entire week. 5-1 Scotties, 4-1 Rams, Union hosting Rochester. Braylon Thomas, the Union quarterback, now over 1,000 passing yards after last week's uh, big non-conference win over Springdale. He's got 25 total touchdowns on the year, and the most impressive part of the Union offense, I think, though, has been the variety and multitude of receiving options. Dane Jonke, he's leading the way with nine touchdowns through the air. But throwing Grayson Blakely with four, Andrew Gettings with three, and Mike Gunn either as a receiving threat out of the backfield or uh, from the slot. He's got a couple of uh, receiving touchdowns to go with two on the ground. All those, by the way, coming in the win over Laurel a couple of weeks ago. Now, Rochester, 
I mean, two weeks ago, they struggled. They lost on the road to Shenango, but then they brought it back to life last week. Their diverse rushing attack. No Antonio Lori, the, the All-State running back from a year ago. Well, no Lori, no problem, I guess. The stud junior back, he's missed, what, last three games for sure. Don't know what the timeline is for his return, but there have been plenty of options in his absence. Jason Clinton was 70 yards. Uh, on the ground last week, Don Guido, 60 yards. Jaden Norman, the quarterback, only attempted three passes last week, but also ran for 80 yards and a pair of touchdowns. This is a rivalry that goes back to 1934. But how about this? Rochester dominated it. They won the first 21 games against Union that they played. However, the last 10 years, Union holding a 7-4 and four record, including a pair of close wins last year uh, by six points and then by two in the playoffs. That's a 7 o'clock kickoff at Sox Russo Stadium for that one. Uh, you can watch it, by the way, on the Union uh, Media, streaming media page. The Elwood City game on Elwood City Wolverines, ecwolverines.com, their YouTube page. And the next game, Shenango hosting Southside. That one can be found on Shenango's YouTube page. So we're 5 for 5 so far in terms of broadcast this Friday. The Wildcats, a tough one last week. After that upset about over Rochester we just alluded to, they fall to Northgate on the road, and now they host undefeated Southside. Can the Wildcats make another upset and knock off another undefeated Rams team at home like they did two weeks ago? Sam Myers, uh, really in the backup role, uh, started the last three weeks. He's over 600 yards passing on the year, 221 yards and two touchdowns last week, but again, turnovers hurt. He had three picks in this one last week. Uh, Michael Kessler, Lane, and Albertini each had touchdown receptions, their first of the season, by the way, last week. So good to get some fresh targets and hopefully open up some more room on the outside for guys like Trey Ross and Colton Fadrizi to get the job done. Southside's offense, on the other hand, they've been rocking it on the ground for the most part. Ryan Navarra, A.C. Corfield, and Brody Almashi. They're each averaging nine yards or more per carry. Navarra leads with nine touchdowns. Corfield and the quarterback Almashi with eight each. Almashi also now with nine touchdown passes on the season. Shenango, they had been in control of this matchup. They'd won six straight before their tight loss last year at Hookstown, where they were very depleted 15 13. And Shenango had a chance to win that one uh, late. Don't ever tell the Shenango Wildcats and Coach Graham the odds because they can get it done at any time. Make it six for six. Laurel hosting Northgate. We'll have uh, the Laurel crew on tap for that one. A huge game for playoff implications here because if Northgate wins after their win last week against Shenango, they have the inside track for that final playoff spot in the Big Seven since they already have wins over Summit Academy and Shenango. Laurel needs a win to keep their chances alive. They still have Summit and Shenango yet to come. It would be the first win in conference play this year for the Spartans, however, at 1-5 and five overall. Colton Carlson, he's been a nice little addition on the outside the last couple of weeks for the Spartans. Lucas Santini found him multiple times against Union. Last week, he got a 41-yard touchdown pass from Jackson Sauters uh, in the fourth quarter. Jack Miles has been the main target, so more options means more room on the inside to allow Ben Hennon to get the run game going yet again. He had another early touchdown last week, over 90 yards in uh, each of the last two games for the Spartans. On the other side, Northgate, the splash play and the big play. Long touchdown runs. Darius Fields, well, he had a field day, 158 yards. It was a 50 and a 55-yard touchdown run for him last week uh, for the Flames in that victory. He's got 10 scores on the season to lead Northgate. Quarterback, is it going to be Santian Lane or is it going to be Austin Mitchell? Lane came in when Mitchell went out with an injury. They both did play last week, but it was Lane who had the majority of the touches. Uh, fifth all-time game between these uh, two. Three in the regular season in the last five years and a playoff game uh, back in the 1990s. 54-14 to 14 was the fewest points scored by Laurel in one of those games. 58-14, to 14, but this is a very new and improved Northgate squad. Uh, all bets are off the table. Wilmington, as we move up to District 10, at General McLean. This is a non-region game. Uh, unsure about the broadcast on this one at this point. Stay tuned at lcsportsnet.com. We'll get you updates if we find one. Uh, but Wilmington at the Lancers of General McLean. 
Last year it was 21-18, or 21-19, excuse me, a loss for Wilmington. Uh, that was their first ever regular season game against General McLean. They had played in the playoffs in 2008 and 2011, which they had split those matchups. Wilmington looking to split the home and home here. And Wilmington really has steadily improved each and every week in that ground game. Ben Miller, Buda Book, they've been the killer bees on the ground, thunder and lightning style approach. Uh, Miller leading the way with seven touchdowns, Buda Book now with five. And Miller still one of the top, if not the top, uh, in Region 3 for rushing yards on the year. Now 776, uh, so averaging still about 130 per game. Also averaging, how about this, just six pass attempts per game for Wilmington. Contrast that with uh, General McLean throwing it 26 times per contest. Matt Caro and Isaac Zeitz, they've both been uh, with some quality quarterback play and time this year. Zeitz has gotten the majority of the snaps, has missed a week though. He has just shy of 600 yards, six touchdowns. Caro just shy of 400 yards with five touchdowns. And the leading receiver, how about this, 40 catches and eight of the 11 receiving touchdowns for Jacob Zeitz. So you're going to hear Zeitz all over the field uh, there up in Edinburgh area. Wilmington, the issue is they struggled against the pass, uh, both against Hickory a couple of weeks ago and then last week against Farrell. 300 air yards allowed last week to the Steelers. And now our final game, Newcastle traveling to Chartiers Valley. 0-6 uh, against 1-5 in this one. The Canes getting touchdowns last week from Malik Jefferson and Amir Akins on a punt return. Slow starts really have hurt the Canes lately uh, and really all year, to be honest. Last week, it was an opening kickoff that was returned for a Montour touchdown against West A. It was five first-half turnovers, negative yards from scrimmage that really has hurt uh, Newcastle hoping to not have to play from behind yet again. Should be a good matchup against Chartier's Valley. Listen for Austin F. Mates. He leads Char Valley with four of the team's eight touchdowns on the year. The Canes all-time, by the way, against the Colts, a 9-2 and two record. However, both Char Valley wins have come in the past three years. We're coming down to the nitty-gritty. We're down to week six, so there's just four weeks of play remaining, and then it's playoff football time here yet again we thank you for tuning in for our extended preview show here for the week six podcast again congratulations your lgkg athletes of the month sophia kelly of nishanik and jay rona of mohawk and your lcap team of the month the elwood city boys cross country team best of luck to them best of luck to all of our county schools we can say that this week because all eight are going against non-county uh, schools so let's make it an eight an O record when we come back and talk on the recap show early next week. It's the Lawrence County Sportsnet podcast series. Make sure you join us and join us on Friday night and join us all week and all season long at lcsportsnet.com. Podcast delivered by Penn Ohio Bottled Water, Lawrence County Sportsnet, powered by LCAP.